Hello everybody, Mr. Peoples here again, and uh, before we get into our next section called the end of the war, let's talk about uh, our knock-knock joke for today. I know you, you can't wait. Uh, knock-knock, dozen. Doesn't anybody want to let me in? Okay. All right, well, let's talk about the end of the war, and you have one learning target for this section, and that is I can describe how the war ended. Let's begin. Uh, remember, America declares war on Germany in April of 1917. By this time, the war had been going on for three years in Europe, and uh, the European soldiers were tired, hungry, and at a point where they didn't know if this war was ever going to end. And the United States joins and travels to Europe and injects a new form of enthusiasm into the Allied forces. Uh, the United States troops were known as the American Expeditionary Force. President Wilson insisted that the American forces be allowed to um, enter the fight as a separate force, one that was not connected with Britain and France, but, but its own fighting force. And the Americans were led by General John J. Pershing, who had put down a little rebe rebellion in Mexico uh, just a few years before. And uh, he thoroughly trained his soldiers for combat and specifically for trench warfare. Because the war had been going on for three years, um, General Pershing knew that the soldiers, once they got from one trench to the other, that they would be fighting in very close quarters. So he taught them how to use knives. He taught them how to fight hand-to-hand -hand because once they got to the enemy, that's how they were going to be uh, fighting. And the army included uh, not only regular soldiers, but National Guard troops, volunteers, and draftees. Uh, here you can see a American soldier's uniform. Uh, back then, during World War I, soldiers were called doughboys. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in class when we cover that a little bit more in class. But what you see here are a couple things that are unique for, this, uh, for the soldier. Uh, the, the clothing was wool because it could be, could be cold. Uh, during times in Europe, during the, and you're outside all time out there in the trenches. And so you're exposed to the weather, so they need something to keep them warm. And down here on the feet, whoops, uh, on the edge of the, the boots, to keep the boots tied so that water wouldn't get in the boots, uh, they had strings to prevent water from getting in there. So you would tie it tight against your leg. Uh, and the worst thing that could happen to you is if your feet... Um, were too moist or got wet, um, then you could, would get something that was called trench foot. Um, and so you didn't want to have that, and so these little strings at the top of the boots prevented that from happening. The weapon that you see here is, is really kind of interesting. Uh, the barrel of it was made to look like a machine gun. And so when Germans would see American soldiers fighting at them, it looked like the Americans were firing machine guns at them uh, by the shape of the barrel. Um, that wasn't the case. They were just they were rifles, but they were made to, made like that to think uh, make the Germans think so. Uh, and then around this soldier's neck is a pouch that carries a gas mask, and so uh, you could get it on very quickly in case you hear of a uh, of a poisonous gas attack. <clears throat> now. This is uh, year three of World War One, and Russia had lost millions and millions of soldiers. And their government at the time was going through a revolution. And in November of 1917, a group of Russians known as the Bolsheviks overthrew the Russian government. Matter of fact, the king of Russia and his entire family were killed by the Bolsheviks. Now, the Bolsheviks believed in communism. And uh, communists believe in an equal distribution of wealth and to get rid of all forms of private property. We'll talk a little bit more about communism in class. Uh, the leader of this group was a man named Vladimir Lenin. Uh, here's a picture of Lenin there on the left. And then uh, the picture on the right shows where he is currently buried in, or where he is currently uh, resting. It's called Lenin's tomb. And it's right there in Moscow, in the capital of Russia. Well, Vladimir Lenin, uh, once he gains control of Russia, knew that the war had reached a desperate point. 
Uh, by this time, 8 million Russians had been killed. Soldiers were leaving the battlefield. Uh, in the cities, people were rioting and fighting over the food. And so in March of 1918, Russia signs a treaty with the Central Powers, basically taking itself out of World War I. So one of the major ally powers, Russia, in 1918 gets out of the war. That leaves Britain, France, and the United States along with other smaller countries around the world. And Russia then turns itself into a communist country and focuses on improving its way of life in its own country. With Russia gone, Germany planned to break through the stalemate in the Western Front. Uh, but the American soldiers arrive about that same time. And although the Germans w were trying to move forward, they were not prepared for the fresh, well-trained American soldiers that came in. And they were eventually driven back. By July of 1918, German forces tried to launch their final events offensive, um, but the terrible losses forced them to stop. American troops helped turn a major turning point in the war. Eventually, the Allies start driving toward victory by pushing the Germans back to Germany. With more than a million United States troops in France, we start to win victories against the German forces, breaking that stalemate. And by November of 1918, American soldiers were on their way to Germany. Now, German people did not have the same rationing system that the United States and Britain had set up. Uh, the people in Germany were suffering because there wasn't a lot of food. Uh, businesses were not going well. There were riots and strikes. And they were running out of soldiers. And so things in Germany were not very good. Uh, the German king actually left Germany bef as the war was coming to a close. He left uh, and went to a different country. Um, and when that happened, basically the, whatever government was left here in Germany uh, was eager to end the war. And so Germany eventually signs an armistice or a peace agreement or a truce on November 11th, 1918. And on the 11th day of the 11th month, World War I, the largest war in world history up to that point, the war to, supposed to end all wars, the Great War ends on November 11th, 1918. Soldiers from the Allies and the Germans uh, met in the middle of no man's land between the trenches and shook hands because the fighting for four years had now come to an end and that they had made it through and that they would be going home to see their families. All right, we're going to talk about the peace process in our next uh, in our next note video. So uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you in that next one.